everybody, I'm Rose Nelson, Education Director for the Mona Lake Committee, and I'm Nora Livingston, the Lead Naturalist Guide. And we're here today for our Mono Lake Moment. Uh, today the Mona Lake Moment is Talking Tufa. So before we get into uh, sharing these amazing and unique mysterious structures with you, we of course want to thank you for staying at home, staying safe, keeping our community safe. Nora and I are demonstrating appropriate social distance for this Facebook event. Um, we're also thankful to our friends and members who continue to support us so we can continue to educate about the Mono Basin via these virtual tours and protect and restore the Mono Basin. So Nora, tell me about Tufa. What is it made out of? Where does it come from? What's it, what's it all about? Thanks Rose, thanks for asking. All of these interesting, maybe even weird structures behind me are Tufa Towers. So Tufa forms in a very interesting way. A lot of people see these towers and they say, they kind of look like cauliflower or termite mounds or stalactites. And well, they do resemble a lot of those things, um, they are slightly different. They are made out of calcium carbonate and they actually form underneath the surface of the lake. They form underwater. And what happens is we have snow that falls on the mountains and the water that melts out of that snow, it, it sinks down into the groundwater table and into the dirt matrix or the soil matrix and it flows above the bedrock down to the lowest point in the basin. It follows gravity down. And while it's going through those rocks and soils, it picks up trace amounts of dissolved minerals and salts. And one of those minerals is calcium. That'll be important in a second, but first I want to tell you the second part of the equation. Mono Lake, it's very salty, but salt doesn't have as much to do with tufa as the alkalinity does. Mono Lake is very rich in carbonate ions. And so when the freshwater springs are flowing down underneath the ground, they come into contact with the lake, they're actually forced up through uh, little faults and cracks in the ground under the water, and they bubble up underneath the lake. Fresh water is less dense than salt water, so it always floats all the way to the surface. But what's happening to form these tufa towers is the calcium that's dissolved in the fresh water is interacting with the carbonate that's dissolved in the lake water. And those two uh, chemicals precipitate out to form a solid. So we basically have two different types of water that come together to form mono lake, or to form these tufa towers. So I'm gonna do a little demonstration here. This in this jar is some mono lake water I just gathered from right over there. And in this beaker is fresh water from the Mono Lake Committee office. Uh, we just put some sink water in here and then added some calcium chloride uh, to imitate those freshwater streams that have calcium dissolved in them. So we're gonna kind of do the opposite. Rather than the fresh water coming up from underneath Mono Lake, we're gonna pour it into the jar. So I'm gonna come a little closer so that everyone can see this. So the fresh water is gonna go into Mono Lake's carbonate rich water. And you see how that white chunky solids are floating to the surface. So I'm just gonna fill this up now and you get this very thick, very chunky water. So if we were to let this sit for a while, it wouldn't form a magic tufa tower in this jar, but it would have a calcium carbonate ring settled at the bottom. Uh, if this were a continually flowing spring, it would bubble up to the top and slowly form a tufa tower. I also have a nice little visual here for you. So you can see the freshwater springs bubbling up underneath the lake, slowly adding more solid calcium carbonate to these tufa towers until it reaches the surface. Now, this picture shows the tufa going above the surface. And we don't normally see that unless the lake drops because the lake is forming only up until the lake surface. 
But Rose is going to tell us why the lake would show us tufa, why the water may have gone down to reveal the tufa, and why that's important. Great, Nora, thank you so much. So it's kind of ironic that we can see the Tupa Towers here and that people come to visit Mona Lake to see the Tupa Towers. Why are they exposed if they were created under the lake? Starting in 1941, the Los Angeles Department of Water and Power uh, completed the Los Angeles Aqueduct, connecting tributary streams from the Mona Basin down to Los Angeles. And over about a period of 40 years, all the water from four out of the five tributary streams coming into the Mona Lake were completely diverted and exported over 330 miles south down to LA. And over about 40 years, the lake level dropped 40 vertical feet. And each foot that it dropped, it exposed more and more of these Tupa Towers. Now the Mona Lake Committee and others were essential in regaining water rights back to Mono Lake. We worked with the city of Los Angeles and with others to not only continue to divert and export water down to LA, but regain water into the tributary streams coming into the lake. This not only helps with lake level rise, but it also helps uh, restoring those tributary streams that had been dry for so long. Um, so Mono Lake is healing and as the Tuba Towers are a reminder of the story of Mono Lake. And so, why are they important? They're definitely part of the Mono Lake story. I have some pictures to share with you. So these are osprey, and the osprey love to nest out on Tufa Towers that are submerged in the lake, like the Tufa behind me that we refer to as Pirate Ship Tufa. It's a safe place for them to nest, lay and hatch their eggs, and raise their young before they fly off as adults. We also have these violet green swallows, one of my favorite birds at uh, South Tufa. And they uh, nest in the cracks and crevices in the Tufa Towers, filling them with soft feathers before laying their eggs. The Tufa is also a very important part of the story, the life history of our alkali fly. In the summertime, the shores of Mono Lake are absolutely covered in these insects. And to be able to lay their eggs, the flies climb on the side of the tufas, submerging themselves below the lake, laying their eggs and continuing their life cycle. The alkali fly are very important for a lot of the birds, but especially the California gulls who come here uh, to nest in the summer. And you can see a California gull here enjoying eating up a bunch of alkali fly on the lake shore. The pupa of the alkali fly is also an important food source for the Kutsetika Paiute, who have been here for as long as anybody can remember. And lastly, the Tupa Towers are great for us to come and visit and be inspired by their formations and think about the story of Mono Lake and think of the resilience and the story of hope that this place brings. So thank you so much for joining us on our uh, Mono Lake moment, talking Tufa today. Talking Tufa. We'll be back on Friday at noon for some uh, Q&A. So get some questions together for Nora and I and to explore this magical place even further with you. And we'll see you down by the lake. Thank you. Bye.